Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrew. Uh, before I get started, just a couple things. First of all, you're going to watch me uh, be, be, be drinking a hot drink uh, throughout this video. Unfortunately, I've got that, you know, back of the throat tickle that you're like, oh god, I hope this isn't going to become something, but you know it is eventually. Uh, of course, for me, this is the week that I can't afford to get sick, so of course this is the week that I'm going to get sick. Uh, uh, life wouldn't be interesting if these types of things didn't happen. Um, now, before I start my video, I also want to say that, as as always, as I have throughout this religious series, uh, I respect your right to believe what you want when it comes to religion. Not only that, uh, I personally do not lose respect for you based on what you believe. You now you can believe in one god, many gods, all the gods, no gods, and that really doesn't change my opinion of a person. I only really have a problem when people try to dictate to me how I have to live because of their beliefs. Um, and that's generally because, unfortunately, they think they are better than other people because they believe what they do compared to what other people believe. Um, to those people, I would just suggest treating other people like you want to be treated when it comes to your beliefs. Um, that being said, I'm also not trying to change your mind about anything here. I'm just sharing my opinion in the hopes to create some sort of dialogue um, because I feel like uh, nowadays especially uh, we are losing that and I think it's actually very important for society to maintain and uh, keep up that dialogue with all opinions not just ones that agree with you. Um, being in that echo chamber is a very dangerous thing in my opinion and uh, I'm trying to do something about it. All right, so today's video is Pope Pius XII and the Reich Concordat. Now, you may have heard that title on this channel before. I promise this is not a repeat video. You will see what I mean. Now, I want you to imagine uh, the timeline that was happening um, as Pope Pius XII, who actually at the time was a cardinal, I'll get into that more later, but uh, signed the uh, Reich Concordat with the, um, with the Nazis and Hitler. Um, so Hitler had risen to power, and he had almost completely taken control of the German government at this point. And the Nazis are openly creating terror in Germany. Um, a lot of people voted for the Nazis because they were afraid of what would happen to them if they didn't. A lot of people also just chose not to vote for anyone because they were afraid of what was going to happen if they voted for someone other than the Nazis, even, and they didn't want to vote for the Nazis. Now, the uh, Center Party, uh, which in Germany was led mostly by Catholic clergy at the time, uh, was all that was standing in Hitler's way for complete control of the government. Now, that being said, um, the, the center party was a, a, a tiny hurdle left for him uh, compared to all the other hurdles he'd had to jump so far. Um, he had a, I believe, a significant majority government at that point, so it, it, he probably would have taken control very quickly either way. And Hitler and the Nazis had already started arresting and disappearing left-wing political figures uh, and activists, union leaders, social activists, and they were being put in the first versions of concentration camps at the time. Now, and around the same time, the Nazis start coming after churches and religious leaders in Germany. So your group has started to be targeted by Hitler. Uh, but, through diplomats, uh, it, Hitler contacts you and says he wants, uh, you know, to work out a treaty between the two groups. Do you take that? Do you create some type of treaty? Uh, a lot of people would say no, because Hitler was evil and a horrible person, and look at all the atrocities that he did. Okay, but pretend at the time you didn't know that Hitler was going to do those things. Uh, pretend you have no knowledge of what was going to happen during World War II. Um, all you knew at the time was that they could and likely would completely wipe you off the map in Germany if you don't make some sort of agreement with them. Um, and so the, the Reich Concordat was um, worked out 
and eventually signed and ratified. And the Concordat guaranteed the rights of the Catholic Church in Germany to continue managing their own affairs independently. Uh, it allowed for freedom of communication within the church to its bishops and clergy, um, between the Vatican and its separate churches. It also allowed uh, things like gazettes, uh, pastoral letters, ordinances, and other documents to be printed and issued to the Catholic people in Germany. Uh, basically, as long as the Catholic Church um, uh, stayed within the law of Germany, they were allowed to be their own independent thing outside of the German government. Um, now, what, what did Hitler get in return? Well, in return, bishops had to swear loyalty to the governor or president of the German Reich when they took office and it stopped any clergy from working in political parties and uh, this was the main reason why the center party um, dissolved uh, because uh, like i said before the center party was made up primarily of, of uh, church clergy uh, and so uh, they, they had to dissolve so that that was one of the things that a lot of people uh, had issue with when it came to um, uh, the Holy See and uh, Pope Pius XII signing the uh, Reich Concordat, was that it got rid of the last little bit of opposition to Hitler. But uh, in reality, Hitler had gotten rid of uh, all of his other opposition, whether it be legitimate or in illegitimate ways. And uh, it's not like he couldn't have done the same to the center party either way. So, and again, being said, the center party was a minority party in the government. So how much opposition did they really uh, create for him at the time? Um, now, a a another big argument that's brought forward is that um, because the the Holy See and the Holy See, by the way, if you don't know, is like the the political arm of the Vatican. They're the one that can make treaties and and, and deals and arrangements with uh, other governments and uh, countries. Um, and so a lot of people say that because the Holy See uh, made this agreement with Hitler, uh, they showed that they respected him as a leader, and that is one of the things he got out of um, this uh, treaty was that a lot of people um, that discredited him in Germany as well as outside of Germany uh, suddenly realized that he was, a, he was um, a political player when he was able to create this treaty. Um, now, that being said, were, was the Holy See actually showing that they respected him as a leader? Uh, you can make agreements with people that you don't like uh, as long as it's been of, uh, mutually benefit to both parties and um, at the time the Vatican was worried about its continued survival in Germany and this uh, protected them uh, now without the Holy See knowing what would come this was in their minds probably the best case scenario at the time because it basically guaranteed their continued freedom guaranteed protections from Hitler and the Nazis and it, it allowed them to, to continue. Um, and they didn't know what was going to happen later. Obviously, they just saw this as a, oh, okay, we'll be okay, and we can, we can work from here. And I do want to point out that just because Cardinal uh, Eugenio Pesili, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, later to become Pope Pius XII, signed the treaty, it did not mean that he trusted Hitler. Um, it, it, there is quite a bit of evidence to show that he really did not trust Hitler. Um, and uh, in sermons, the clergy regularly, now this isn't him specifically, but uh, the clergy in uh, Germany uh, regularly spoke out about supporting persecuted people. Now, there were a lot of things that Pope Pius XII did um, during World War II that... Um, were actually very um, risky for the, the Vatican, and uh, especially because they had uh, this treaty with Hitler and the Nazis, the Reich Concordat. Um, 
So a coup, uh, or just one example of this, a, a coup was being planned in Germany with some of the anti-Nazi generals who did not like how um, things were going and wanted to return Germany to a democracy. And they were aware that a coup like this could have could cause a civil war in Germany because there was enough support for the Nazis that it, it could be a, uh, a long-term fight uh, for the very uh, type of government that they were going to have in Germany. Uh, but before they started this coup, the those generals uh, wanted assurances from the West and from the Allies that um, they weren't going to just take advantage of this chaos that ensued and um, uh, maybe invade or um, do do other things that would, that would damage Germany. Um, Pius the Twelfth actually believed uh, agreed, sorry, to be the uh, go-between between those generals and the Allies, and if Pius's Pius the Twelfth's involvement at the time had been discovered. Uh, that would have been a disaster for both the Vatican and the German clergy because uh, I'm getting notifications on my computer uh, for random things. All right. Um, so why would it have been disastrous? Well, number one, um, that would be breaking German law, um, being a part of a potential coup. Um, so I could very easily see Hitler um, saying, okay, you've broken the treaty and therefore now Catholics are the problem. Uh, it would be very easy, very easy for him to, to do that and I, I definitely believe uh, showing what he did uh, not only during World War II but also pre-World War II, uh, it was a very possible that he would do something like that where he would find any reason to renege on that deal and uh, then uh, then start uh, interfering and also uh, just annihilating essentially the, the the church if nothing else but out of spite um, and uh, so moving into World War II uh, in 1941 and early 1942, Pope Pius XII directed the church to provide discreet aid to the Jews and other victims of the Holocaust. Um, this is when they learned of what the, the atrocities that were going on, and so they, once they learned about it, they discreetly uh, provided aid. Um, and uh, so this was... Um, providing documents for baptized Jews um, to to protect them from being rounded up. Uh, it also meant providing false documents in some cases. Uh, it also meant uh, hiding them in uh, Catholic institutions and just protecting them as much as possible. Um, now they had to do this discreetly because again uh, it was illegal in Germany uh, to, to you know, work against the government in this way to protect the Jews when they were being rounded up. So, uh, again, yes, they had to do it discreetly. Um, I, I hear the argument, could they have done more? But if they did more and it became no common knowledge, then they would have been, because of just how, uh, because of Hitler and, and, and the Nazis, they would have been completely wiped out. So... Is it better that they do it discreetly and save? Uh, I believe the figure now the is the argued figure now is save between somehow somewhere of seven hundred thousand to eight hundred and sixty thousand Jews uh, during World War Two, or do they do more potentially get caught and then that whole thing goes away? And uh, moving forward again during his. Uh, a speech uh, for Christmas 1942, once evidence had emerged of the mass slaughter of Jews, Pope Pius XII voiced his concerns, and um, I have the direct quote of what he said here. 
Humanity owes this vow to those hundreds of thousands who, without any fault on their part, sometimes only because of their nationality or race, have been consigned to death or to a slow decline. Now, some places also translated, translated that last part uh, as marked down for death or gradual extinction. Um, so, he did speak out about it. Um, it wasn't a strong criticism by any means, uh, fair enough. And he didn't say a lot more on the topic. Um, and he actually, we, we actually have his exact reasons for this. Um, he was afraid it would provoke Hitler into doing more uh, against uh, not only the Jews but the other targeted uh, groups, uh, and also by it would it would provoke him to use more brutal means against these targeted groups. And I'm sure he was probably also afraid of what might happen to the Vatican and the German clergy if he were to speak out more. Um, he also uh, had a, a plan to remain as impartial as possible and, and so not speak out as much about the atrocities so that he could um, earn a role in potential future peace talks uh, and peace negotiations if they were to happen. Um, now some people criticize him for this, but it is good if there is a neutral party involved. Um, it didn't turn out this way, but uh, he, he didn't know how history was going to unfold. Um, and also the, the Catholic Church and the uh, Catholic clergy in Germany were a huge part of the resistance during World War II. And without them, the resistance probably wouldn't have been as organized or as success successful as it was. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. You're, you're asking how the resistance really did anything. Look at what Hitler and the Nazis were able to do. But just imagine if they didn't have to deal with that resistance and was able to put that effort, whether it be, you know, um, troops, resources, and time, all into either uh, creating, uh, causing more atrocities within the Holocaust or fighting the Allied, uh, those resources, it, it, it could have meant a much different story when it came to the result of World War II. Um, it's hard to say how much the resistance contributed to the Allied victory in terms of actual numbers, but um, it is acknowledged that it absolutely did help, and who knows what the result would have been if there was no resistance. Um, at the very least, it could have been, it, it, it could have meant that way more of those targeted groups were uh, slaughtered in the death, death camps. It could have meant that the war raged on longer than it did. Um, I don't think that... Um, how do I put this? I believe that that resistance did help, absolutely, as did the resistances in all of the the conquered countries that, that Germany took over. Um, again, they spent a lot of... Uh, man a lot of, a lot of men resources and time were used to combat that instead of being able to move them into other positions such as fighting at the front so it was a very important thing and because of the structure that the church already had in germany uh it was it was very very easy for them to mount a um a, a a resistance from that and allow it to be discreet enough that it kind of it didn't go unnoticed obviously but it was very very difficult for Hitler to say oh this is the church doing this and and that's what allowed them to continue doing what they were doing now there is um, some debate uh, like I said over the actual number but uh, historians agree that the Catholic Church saved hundreds of thousands of Jews and as I said before it's likely somewhere between 700,000 and 860,000 total were saved um, some of the ways they did this they hid um, people in Christian uh, buildings such as monasteries convents, schools and churches as well as in Christian family homes 
Uh, as I mentioned before, they also provided documents, uh, real and fake, uh, to protect uh, Jews who had been baptized or supposedly baptized uh, for, because uh, uh, according to the church, that meant that they were no longer Jewish, they were actually Christian, and therefore should not go to concentration camps or potentially death camps. Um, and uh, the they also uh, lobbied with Axis officials regularly to try and save as many people as they could. And the Vatican itself even opened its doors uh, to any non-Aryan refugees to help shield them from Nazis and Hitler. Um, I actually know someone who uh, likely would not exist today if his grandmother hadn't been hiding in a Catholic church and then um, she was actually moved to a couple different locations within Germany to uh, try to uh, prevent her from being found because she was a Jew and then sent to Auschwitz. So this is something they did. This is how they helped during the war. And actually there's an interesting, um, an interesting event that happened as the Nazis were rounding up Jews in Rome and this was happening just outside the walls of the Vatican. The, the church stepped in and uh, saved as many lives as possible, uh, providing, like I said before, uh, evidence, and a lot of it falsified evidence, that, that at least some of these people had been baptized and should be released. And then they also tried uh, as much as possible to get as many more of those Jews released. Uh, unfortunately, the, the diplomat they were talking to was like, uh, was kind of adamant that the rest be t be taken as well be taken um, and said something to them like do you want me to tell Hitler that you're complaining about our, our, our agreement that we have and 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 the the Vatican kind of had to ease up at that point because again if that agreement uh, if Hitler thought that they were breaking that agreement I'm sure he would have very uh, quickly um, reacted to that and um, the consequences to not only the Vatican, and to the, the Catholics in Germany would be uh, catastrophic. Uh, it could be ca it could have been catastrophic for the the entire war effort too. So, because of that, um, you know they did some really really good things. Uh, the not just Pope Pius the the twelfth obviously, but the Catholic Church and the uh, the German clergy as well as uh, the rest of the clergy in Europe as well. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I will have a, another video coming out for you this Wednesday, and I will see you then. Have a good day.